Salutations! Legends of the Tetrarch took a booting in the stands going from just under the top three down to currently seventh. Let's see if the latest from Hit Point can push that down even further and maybe try to claim another top spot. Or will it be set under it? Gotta catch them all, apparently, in Monster Viator. Viator? Viator? They used that word in the story of the game. I don't even know. I still don't understand what it means. They never explain it. But anyway, you play as an amnesiac hero named Coulter, who I kept thinking I was going to botch and say Cutler, which I can thankfully rename. He is met by a witch who sends him on his way with one of over 20 in total of monsters to find and roll with. And yes, you can rename any that you recruit. It's less catching anything you see and more handouts. And yes, gotta catch them all, quote-unquote, for a trophy. You will constantly run afoul of the game's Tomb Rocket in one Prince Biscuit, spelled with an E, spells like Biscuit, who's always using whatever duplicitous means to get monsters on his side. The song that plays whenever he shows up suggests that the prince is a bumbling type, but that's very deserving. He's actually quite competent in monster taming, and your first fight with him and his men will get you curb stomped. Man, are these human sprites in this game adorably expressive, especially a uh, moon guy. My heart melts a little every time I push little, as I called him, red with two dudes to pseudo-homage the first-gen Pokemon. Push him along and get him the, all the all the monsters I can recruit. Heck, some types you get can even help you move across the overworld without getting attacked. One acts as your boat for the game, one super late in the game is your flyer, and you don't even need no stinking badges or HMs to do this. Already a very helpful thing they pointed out in my first battle, if you've missed any buffs or debuffs... Press the square button, it'll detail everything. Thing as I couldn't control my monster to do things. At least not yet. That problem gets solved quickly enough by helping out who turns out to be your fourth party member. So it's a party of two humans and two boosties, only the latter of which you can swamp in and out. And you all start out with four skills to quickly drop enemies. Our old slime of these hit point games, the Poncho, has a golden version you can pummel for gold equal to the damage you do before it runs off in uh, three turns, three of its turns. Very helpful since you'll stumble and also purchase these weapons throughout your campaign. Like most hit point games, you gotta spend money to boost these equipments up to plus five. And then do eventually start taking and dishing out, so grind. There's a ton of side quest content to mess with if you want the platinum. Speaking of grinding, Hope you like encounters in this game to level up monsters because, oh man, <laughs> I've seriously gotten an encounter the second I hit the button to continue playing after getting an item. I've gotten an encounter coming out of a story scene for crying out loud, like, standing still, <laughs> encounters. I've never seen that before. Any item you pick up, you can check what it does without going into a menu. Very nice improvement as you don't have to go into your menu of items just to find out where it is, to see what it does. You know, you're not rifling through menus like, oh, what did I pick up? What did I pick up? Including all these collection-based items to up your stats and also new to this, job classes. Some level, some you can level up to the maximum of five just by finding items. And then you can upgrade it by returning to the person who might have given you that job. Well, some jobs anyway. The real test of this are some of the boss fights, and also a random, while mostly vanilla mystery dungeon-ish kind of thing, where you start off naked in level and stats, and you just gotta hope you're lucky enough to find good uh, Carmina to equip. Yeah, that makes a return. Weapons that are already set in stone, you don't get money to upgrade them, like weapons, items, rings. And you gotta find the rest of your monster party members again. I grinded until, at some point on each floor, the random battles just six so to move on i ended up in one case three bosses in one encounter that i was higher level then but i still lost to in all those hours in my first tower run just so i had to rely on the dlc of damage times two and experience times three just to manage this and yeah you do get a trophy for completing that it also helps you to get the damage trophies as well. The last one asks of you to do 100,000 damage, six digits or more. My second run in the tower with the DLC active, I lucked out and got Kelpie, 
who is good at either guaranteed critting one enemy or doing decent damage to a bunch of enemies and getting a buff off of it. The other in Cerberus, who can really tear through enemies. Get enough Karmana equipped to turn that into a crit machine and with double damage. I was starting to uh, one turn kill some bosses. The monster Bahamutina, if you can recruit her in the game, helps with that 100,000 damage trophy easy with the damage up DLC. I will we'll say this, I didn't even do the DLC until I completed just about everything else. You don't even need to finish the final area that gets unlocked to get all the trophies that uh, are just progression. So I just took my one L in the tower and said, all right, coming back with the DLC to get the two trophies I was missing. The damage and the conquering the tower, all 50 floors of it. So yeah, hit point again with the lack of hold handing the greater number of EXE create games are known for. But the amount of stuff to find and get off the beaten path and the story is where this game shines, which you'll be doing a lot of if you want all monsters. Some require you get tough enough to beat them off the beaten path boss fights. But I did all that without the damage increase, so with enough grinding and a spot of luck here and there, you can win these fights too. Just basic. Your main character is expressively adorable too. It overall made for a really old school RPG experience, so if you're itching for something like this, with an emphasis on exploring and a lot of battles and new party members to mess with, this game scratches all of those itches and then some. Far and away hit points finest game. I feel like it may be possible to do the tower and get the 100 thou without the DLC, but I have no time to get extremely lucky enough to win. So I won't fault the game for that. I believe this game can rest comfortably in the bottom of the top five for now. We'll see what the next game can do as we return to EXE Creates latest in a game called Maiden Tower. So until then, take care and thanks for watching.